The KBO Flip is a lightweight, ultra portable 36 volt e bike. It features a decently sized battery, a very sturdy rear rack welded into the frame, and a surprisingly good paint job that really makes this e bike visually stand out from the rest. Today, as usual, we'll go over all the specs and components of this bike and then take it out on the road for a test ride. 10 miles an hour. Come on, paddle, 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 paddle. Let's go. Ooh, burning calories. Let's jump right in. All right, guys, so let's check out the specs and components of the KBO Flip. We're gonna start up here at the top. Simple rubberized grips. They do feel a little bit plasticky. Here's your display. Go ahead and just hold that button down and you can cycle through your odometer, your trip distance, voltage, which is very good that they added that, and the time, I don't know why you'd want that, whatever. But yeah, you got your battery bar, speed, your power assist level, which goes up to three, and uh, I think you might be able to change that in the display settings. We'll take a look at that later. There's a lot of settings, guys. Ignore this phone mount, this, uh, this is mine. This didn't come with the bike, but this is a great phone mount, guys. Seven speed shifter, half twist throttle, or is it a quarter twist throttle? I don't know which one it is. Quarter twist, half twist, people call it both. Twist throttle right here. Mechanical disc brake levers. Cable sleeving looks nice and neat. Very nice. And here we have our non-adjustable suspension fork. Here's the latch for folding up the handlebar stem. Plastic fenders, which I do like. I really like plastic fenders because they don't rattle and they look fantastic. These look exactly like the metal ones, except they are nice and quiet. I like plastic fenders. Team plastic fenders. Got a nice little light right over here, decently bright. You just hold the plus button on the controls to control that. And another thing this bike gets is a walk mode. So if you hold down the minus button, you will get a walk mode which gives you a slow speed to help the bike up a hill if you're walking next to it. And we get Chaoyang branded, lightly knobbied tires. These aren't too crazy knobby, but they get the job done. You're not gonna be going, uh, you're not gonna be climbing Mount Everest in these, but they're good for a light gravel roads, light dirt roads, mostly pavement. And there's the Logan branded mechanical disc brake caliper with the 160 millimeter rotor. Moving on to the back of the bike, I want to try and get some shots of the paint job on this bike. It is phenomenal. It has this uh, almost like a pearl color to it. I know it, on the website it just says white, but it does look like it's, it has a pearl tint to it. I'm going to do my best to get it on the camera. It is very nice looking. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'll do some editing magic to recreate on video what I see in real life. All right, so here's the uh, obviously the hinge. And a lot of folding bikes, they have the battery sitting here, but this one has it in the back. So it makes the whole front end of the bike a lot lighter. This is great, this is a carrying handle for when the bike is folded up or when it's not. You can easily pick this up and carry it around. This is great that they added this bottom stand over here so when the bike is folded up it's not resting on the chain ring a lot of bikes don't include this and thankfully they do the seat on this bike is decently squishy pretty wide as well and it also has springs underneath which help a lot with shock absorption which is fantastic because this is a hardtail bike so i do appreciate those springs and down here we have basic plastic pedals non-foldable kbobike.com in case you see this bike and you don't know what it is you don't know the website and it's not too obvious the website so it's not annoyingly in your face when they write down the website it's just some small text down here and here's where the battery sits this is a 36 volt 15.6 amp hour battery this is a lowered powered bike controller sits right down here and to take this battery out, what you're going to have to do is flip the seat up using this little lever over here. So you go ahead and push this up. That flips up. And to take this battery out, you have to turn it off, go all the way into the unlock portion, and then you can pull this battery out. It does take a little bit of strength to pull out, but it does come out. This key, by the way, it has to stay 
in the bike when you are using it. So right now, see how it's in the on position? You can turn the bike off. You can take the key out, but when you put the key in, turn it on, you cannot remove the key. At the top, you have a small gauge as to what battery level it's at. We already went on our test ride, so we used up some of the battery. Let's fold that down. Boom. This is a really nice rear rack. I almost don't even wanna put anything on it because the paint job, again, is so pristine on this bike and it's all welded into the frame. So this is a very, very, very sturdy frame. You can hold a lot of weight on this, although you won't want to because this is a weaker bike unless you really wanna use your legs and use these pedals right here. You're not gonna be putting all that much weight on this, but if you are, it will be able to support it. Tiny little kickstand in the back. And there's your rear brake caliper, Logan branded with the same 160 millimeter rotor. There's our tiny little geared hub motor in the back. Another plastic fender. There's our seven speed transmission with the Shimano Turney TZ derailleur. Another look at the tiny little geared hub motor in the back of this bike. The back of the bike does not come with a light that is integrated into the controls. And at first glance, this does look like it's just a reflector, but there's a little button underneath and you push that and this lights up for you. So it is nice that this does have a light, although it's not linked with the brake lever, so it's not going to light up brighter as you press the brakes. It is nice that it's not just a reflector, it is an actual light. Let's see if we have any modes on this. Nope just turns on and off. Moving back up to the bike, we have our center latch right over here for the main folding mechanism. And moving on guys, let's take a look at how to remove this battery. So you lift up the seat, from there you turn the key, push the key in, twist it, and then from there you can muscle this thing out. It does come out, it takes a little bit of effort. You can easily take the battery out, and from there you line it up with the rail, carefully put it back in, push that in there, Turn the bike on and you're good to go. Or if you want, you can take the key out. No one's gonna steal it. And from there, throw the seat back down. And let's talk about how to fold this bike. So let's go ahead and lower the seat all the way. So there's a little, tiny little lever down here that you push forwards. And then you can unlock this latch right there. And from there, you can go ahead and easily fold this thing up. You go ahead and set it down on the brace that's in front of the chain ring. Let's put that kickstand back in. And there it is, guys. This thing is nice and tiny. And of course, you can do the same thing with the handlebar. Fold this in, take that latch down, fold that in, and this bike is nice and compact now. Check that out. To undo it, really simple. You just reverse what you just did. Throw the handlebar back up. Lock that in place, pick up the bike. The front is very light because there's no battery here. So it's so this bike is easier to fold and unfold than some of the other folding bikes that I've had. Slam this down and you're good to go. Let's go ahead and turn this on and I'm gonna tell you guys all the little display setting intricacies because there are a lot of different options. We're zoomed into the display right now. So to get into the advanced options, you hold down the plus and minus buttons. All right, so P1 is gonna be your screen brightness. P2 is gonna be to adjust uh, the display of whether it says miles an hour or kilometers an hour. P3 is gonna be your voltage. This is a 36 volt bike. Obviously we want to set it at 36 volts. P4 is gonna be the time at which this display and the bike shuts off if you're not touching it. So right now it's set to 10 minutes. You gotta make sure you move quick, otherwise it goes back to the default display. But if you wanna go back into the advanced settings, if it does switch over, if you go back and press the uh, plus and minus buttons, it'll continue where you left off. So we're still at P4. P5 is gonna be the pedal assist level, so if you set it to zero, it's at three. If you set it to one, if we go ahead and go back, now if you've noticed, there's five levels. And before there was only three. I like it at three, so I'm just gonna keep it. If you wanna go back to the P5 and set it to zero to make sure you have three, that's fine. So P0 is the, oh, there we go, we gotta go back in. P06 is gonna be the wheel size, so make sure that's set to 20. 
P7, don't touch that. P8, all right, so this is your speed unlock setting. So just set this all the way up. See how it goes all the way up to 41. Just bring that up to 41 so you get the full speed. This is how you unlock the top speed of your bike. P11 is the sensitivity to how sensitive you want your power delivery to be. And so obviously we want as much power as possible instantaneously, so I just set that all the way up. P12, again, more help intensity setting. So set this all the way up to three. That's gonna give you as much intensity as possible. We're all about intensity here. The other settings don't touch, but P17 is your cruise control setting. I don't like cruise control, but if you want that, you can go ahead and turn that on. And by the way, look at this. This bike goes all the way up to P25 or 26, whatever it is. Yeah, it looks like 26. Don't touch these numbers. You're gonna mess up your bike. They don't do anything anyways, except mess up your bike. The other settings that I mentioned, those are the only ones you need to know. A lot of the settings in this display aren't even in the manual, so might as well not even touch them. All right, guys, so we are on the KBO website looking at the KBO flip. And as you can see, it does come in this black color or the white color. And again, in my opinion, I think the white color looks really nice. I know you guys saw in my earlier clips of this bike, it's almost like a pearl white color. In my opinion, I think it looks fantastic. So see, these things are really nice. They're really super compact and portable. You could fit two of them in the back of a, uh, looks like this is a small crossover, small SUV. Very nice. And check this out. They're having a Valentine's Day sale for 44% off. Looks like this bike right now is under $700. That is a very good price. They do sell a bunch of accessories on their website as well. And on their website, it does say that the KBO Flip is good for people between 5'1 and 6'2. Minimum seat height is 22 inches. 30 day return policy, very nice. Two year warranty and of course free shipping, love that. And here we have some more specifications of the bike, that 500 watt peak power. The range as always will be different for everyone depending on how much you weigh, temperature. There's a lot of different variables that go into the range. It looks like the controller is a 15 amp controller and that makes sense because 36 times 15 is just over 500 watts. The bike does weigh 57 pounds, a very light weight for an e-bike. The bike comes with a two amp charger. And guys, feel free to pause it at this point in the video in case you guys wanna see some of these numbers. These are the measurements of the geometry of this e-bike. So those are the specs and components of the KBO Flip. Let's get this thing out on the road and see how it performs. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are on a little foldable e-bike, little 36 volt foldable e-bike called the KBO Flip. This one comes in a nice white pearl color. I really like the paint job. And we're gonna do a slightly different ride today for these lower voltage, slower e-bikes. What I'm gonna do is start at the top of our main hill climb test and actually first try and do the downhill speed because we're not gonna go our usual route. So we'll try and do a downhill speed We'll get this thing up to speed as fast as possible to the point where we're as close to the free spinning speed as possible, which on this bike is 25 miles an hour. So here we go, downhill speed. And then we're gonna come back up this way and see what the hill climb is like. But we're pedaling hard, guys. Once you get to like mid 20s, we'll throttle. All right, throttle only. Twenty six, twenty seven. Mechanical disc brakes. Yeah, let's bed those bad boys in. All right. Bring the gearing down, even though we're not going to use it. And we're going to do our usual hill climb test. We're in the highest pedal assist mode we can get. And I'll tell you guys a little funny story about this display later on this ride. Here we go, a little winded. Man, I don't know if I'm out of shape or I'm just pedaling really hard, whatever. All right, without further ado, let's get to it. Three, two, one, boom. Oh man, that is so slow. Jeez, it's hard to stay upright. What I'm thinking about doing is 
putting all of the 36 volt e-bikes or maybe the e-bikes that are under 750 watts on their own list for this hill climb because they really do truly take a lot longer than the 48 volt e-bikes let me know what you guys think if you guys like content like this please subscribe to the channel if i've earned your subscription like the video if you like it hit the notification bell follow me on instagram and tiktok I barely have any followers on those platforms, so I'm trying to get those numbers up. I know those are uh, rookie numbers, whatever they are right now. If you don't like this video, let me know in the comments why. Tell me why you're mad. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're not doing too bad for a weaker bike. Finishing up at 12 miles an hour. All right, so there it is. This is a slower e-bike, guys. Allegedly, the motor peaks at 500 watts, and it's a 36-volt system, so you don't buy stuff like this for speed. Cross over this road. The gearing, I already know, feels really low, which is good, because if you don't have a lot of power, you obviously need some low gearing so you don't get stuck up a hill. Do a little bit of sidewalk riding. Bikes like this, you don't feel guilty about riding in the sidewalk. Like some e-bikes, they are like borderline motorcycles. That's how much power they have. This one, tiny little guy. So if someone sees you riding this on the sidewalk, they're not really gonna care. These tires, they are, I think, two and a half inch tires, something like that. I'll throw it up on the screen. So they are on the narrower side than obviously fat tires. And that's fine, the tiny little bike. You don't want huge tires for a low-powered e-bike. That would be silly. But man, I do like how it's nimble and lightweight. The steering is tight. So if you need to make any tight turns, it's, it's easy. You don't need to Austin Powers your way through a turn. Oh my God, the bumps. Yeah, guys, this, uh, these foldable e-bikes, they're not really known for their suspension. Especially this one, this is a hardtail, but that's okay. You know, you buy this knowing it's a hardtail. You're not gonna be off-roading this thing anyway, unless it's light off-roading, just like that, what you guys saw. If you do want a little bit more suspension, you could always, I don't know, get a comfier seat. You could definitely throw a suspension seat post on there and that would help as well. This bike does have front suspension, so that's good. Yeah, and the top speed of this bike, slight downhill right here I did unlock this bike and the free spinning wheel goes up to 25 looks like the speedometer is more or less accurate so you guys will probably hit 20 miles an hour in this bike that's my guess yeah we're slowing down just a bit you could probably expect 20 yeah see 19 18 all right what are you gonna do the starting strength for the initial assist that you get is very, very minimal. And I did actually turn it up in the settings. And still, it's pretty minimal, which it is what it is. For some people, they don't want any jerky movements. They want a nice slow start. They're looking for more of a bicycle, not a moped. And so they're expecting to pedal some people are expecting to use this like a bicycle and not just throttle only and when you get weaker e-bikes like this even though it does have a throttle which is nice which is what we're using now you expect to use your legs which if that's what you want this is perfect this is a perfect amount of power unless you have some type of a disability where you really need like right now i'm, I'm trying to power and I'm, i gotta use my legs if you have a disability where you really need throttle, this isn't the bike for you because throttle ain't gonna give you all that much. Watch this, watch this, watch this guys. Brake test. Eh, mechanical disc brakes. They work okay. They need a little bit of adjusting and they'll be fine. For smaller e-bikes like this that are lightweight, mechanical disc brakes are just fine. In my opinion, some of you might disagree. It's always nice to have hydraulic brakes, but you know, 
there's always a, uh, a price point for a reason. This is priced very, very much so in the budget-friendly range, the beginner's range. You know, there's a joke when it comes to firearms that your pistol is what you use to get to your main rifle. And I like to think of these little bikes as kind of like sidearm e-bikes. They're little guys, they're pistols. But uh, yeah, this is the sidearm that you use to get to your main rifle, in my opinion. And sometimes all you need is a sidearm. Sometimes you need a main rifle. And if you just need a sidearm, this is perfect. All right, so we're pedaling. Man, the gearing is really low, look at this. 10 miles an hour. Very, very, very slow ramp up on the power. But once we get going, yeah, I feel that this 36 volt system does have a little bit more power than some of the other 36 volt e-bikes that I've tried. Here we go, yeah, I gotta go back down to one. I think allegedly it peaks at 500 watts, and you feel it. Still not a lot. That's what it is, all right. 10 miles an hour, come on, paddle, 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 paddle. Let's go. Ooh, burning calories. Guys, anyone that tells you you can't get exercise on an e-bike probably has never read an e-bike, number one. They've never tried it. But they've never tried a lower power e-bike like this, for sure. And they haven't gone up a hill with one either. You can definitely get exercise on an e-bike. All right, suspension feels fine. This is a, uh, a non-adjustable fork. It is a little bit clunky. What are you gonna do? Handlebars are narrow, but that's because this thing was designed to be portable, foldable, fit in a small space. You could probably throw two of these things in your SUV, definitely one in your regular sedan, depending on the size of your sedan. So, very lightweight bike. It even has a handle on top. I really appreciate that. And for a little budget bike, man, the paint job is nice. Uh, when KBO was sending me this bike, they asked me, do you want one in black or white? And at first I wanted to just go with the black color, just because I like it. Simple, clean, minimalist, black color, you know, accessories. Everything goes well with black, you know. But then I saw one reviewer said that the white color is like almost like a pearl white. I'm like, interesting, let's check that out. Let's see what that's like. And man, they were right. It is a nice looking white color. So if you are into aesthetics of your e-bikes, that will be valuable for you. You will enjoy that. Nice, nimble steering on this thing. You can just zip around, tight little turns. Do a little slalom action over here. Watch me crash mid-video. Yeah, tight little turns. Let's go up this driveway entrance. Yeah. Easy peasy, let's go off this curb. No sweat. It's easy to throw around a lightweight bike. Just like when you're a little kid, you know, if you fall down, you just bounce right back up, pretty much made a cartilage. There's no weight really crushing you. You're not crushing yourself from your heavy legs, compressing on your neck or whatever. Funny story, I was actually skiing the other day and there, it was night skiing, and there were kids everywhere. They were falling left and right. They were just kind of tumbling around. Man, they just jumped right back up and, and just kept on going because their fall wasn't far, number one. They're made of cartilage, but they're lightweight. Their fall doesn't really hurt them all that much versus if I fell like they fell, oh man, uh, I would be getting up real slow if I was able to get up. But yeah, this tiny lightweight bike, you can throw this thing around. This is nice. Like I said, guys, sidearm of e-bikes. Brake test. Yeah, brakes are fine. Man, the power delivery is very, very slow. What are you gonna do? But let's go ahead and check out the power. So we're on pedal assist level three, and I do know that that'll give you full power by throttle. Let's see what the free spinning wheel is on level three. Yeah, see it gets to 25. Let's bring it down to level two. 23, interesting. Okay, that's weird. Level one. Hmm. 
Hmm, that's weird. I feel like it still gives you full speed. Maybe the power levels feel different. Yeah, getting on and off this bike is nice. So we're on level one. Let's just pedal. See what speed we get. Let's slow down so we're not using gravity for help. All right. So it seems like we're leveling off at 15. Level two. Level two, we're gonna have to test on the way back. Actually, no. Level two, still giving me power up to about 20. Oh! Ah, that damn mirror. I like this mirror because I could easily take it off and apparently the mirror agrees. It will take off on you. The handlebars are narrow on this bike, so I don't know if my hand probably pushed it away. Let's throw this back on. And these are cheap, so I don't feel bad if they break. But they're good for review. So, for example, if I sell this bike, I won't have all kinds of holes in here. Maybe I'll get something else. I don't know. Just for reviews. Let's get that on tighter. All right. Really easy to get on and off this bike. Let me go ahead and tell you the story about uh, the display of this bike and the settings. So I wanted to unlock this bike, unlock the top speed, and I'm a typical guy. I don't read instructions. I'm not really careful with instructions. I learn from my own mistakes. So I start putting in numbers, adjusting all kinds of settings. I have no idea what they do. And I put in a bunch of settings and I miscalibrate something and then the throttle and the pedal assist stop working. Like what is happening? And I couldn't find anything on the internet at all, on the regular internet, like with a Google search about the settings, because there's a lot of them in this display. We'll talk about those later. But finally, I joined a KBO Facebook group and someone was nice enough to post all of the default settings. There's a lot of them. And so I did that and that fixed it. And with a little bit more adjusting through the knowledge that I've gained from trying to fix it, we're back and we unlock the speed and we're and we're all set and so one thing that i do want to test right now that hopefully won't break this bike and what i mean by break it is break it and not be able to fix it is increase the amps of the motor because right now i want to say it's set to 15 amps times 36 so what we'll do is increase that Let's take a look. Yeah, P14. Let's just throw that up to 20 and see what happens. All right, here we go, guys. If we if I break this bike, you guys will witness witness that. Will I have more power? I don't know. Sometimes it's locked by the controller. So no matter what you put in the display, you're not going to get more power. Yeah, I know. Feels about the same. Let's bring it all the way up to 22. That's the highest it goes. Alright, so before we were kind of going at like 18 miles an hour. We ended at the stop sign, maybe 19. And honestly, it looks like it's gonna be the same. So yeah, that doesn't do anything, unfortunately. What are you gonna do, guys? I tried. I tried. But I do really like this bike. Some of you guys might see this and you think, what are you doing reviewing this tiny little bike? I wanna see the fast stuff, the high speed stuff, the long range stuff. And yes, that is more exciting. But I always say this, for every job, there is a particular tool. For example, if you're hanging a picture, you don't need a sledgehammer, nor do you want one. But if you are, you know, nailing in a stake into the ground or something, yeah, you want a sledgehammer and a little, little tiny hammer ain't gonna do you a whole lot. This is the equivalent of the tiny hammer. If you wanna go fast and far, you're not gonna buy this anyway, but if you just need something for 
maybe you're cruising around a campground or on the neighborhood something flat especially maybe you live in florida or some other place or some other geographical location where it is flat this is great this is nice and nimble just hanging out chilling and then i can just throw it in my car after look at this just cruising i can throw it in my car after lightweight if you have any kind of disabilities which prevents you from lifting big heavy e-bikes this is also fantastic so for every tool there's a job and you know as long as you buy the right tool that's what's most important if you buy this expecting to go fast you will be disappointed if you buy this expecting to go far you'll be disappointed but if you want something super casual chill this is great and the price is right if you guys check out the link in the description below it will help the channel at no extra cost to you if you buy this bike using that link but if you want something beginner budget friendly lightweight i think this is great it's a great option so we're at five miles now and the battery is still showing full bars what's nice about this bike i really appreciate every single company that does this is they show voltage on the display i love that so yeah, see, 4.7 miles on the odometer, 4.7 on my GPS, so perfectly aligned. The speedometer is also perfectly calibrated as well, and you can adjust the wheel size to tinker with that more. I really like the display settings that way. I know there's a lot of settings, but when you do tinker with them and you figure out what they should be and you get them right, fine-tuned, everything will run perfectly, as expected. And so my voltage right now is 39, just resting here, 39.5. It's going up a little bit because I was accelerating. And there is always a voltage dip when you're stressing out your battery by using it, obviously. Yeah, so now it's dipping down to 38, 37. That's normal, guys. We'll ride around this bike for a bit, give it a little bit of a range test, maybe just 10 miles or so nothing crazy and see what the voltage is later with a multimeter if we can get that reading which i think with this battery we'll be able to and i'll let you guys know what that is man it is a nice day we are actually finally gonna have a semi-decent week in new england it's been raining or snowing or extremely cold non-stop and it's uh it was just killing me i was still trying to get out and ride do these reviews make the companies happy that send me the bikes because i want to get these reviews out in a timely manner i don't want to just sit on things and just have them waiting for me i like to finish projects in a timely manner it makes everyone happier it makes me happy it makes my schedule happy it makes the companies happy and it allows me to do other things and uh, I'm still trying to do it all in this cold, but right now we get a nice refreshing 40 something, 42 degrees, and most importantly, sunny. It's just been so cloudy lately. All right, guys, so here's a hill. Should we go up this hill? <sighs> Whatever. Let's just go up this huge hill. This is a big, not steep hill, but it's a long hill. I'd say it's a moderately steep hill. <laughs> And we're just going to go up gear one, pedal assist three. I'm holding down the throttle the whole time. There's a little bit of a delay, felt like, when I let go of the throttle. And I went back into pedal assist. Oh, man, this is a struggle. This is a struggle. Got to really push hard. Hold on, guys, I got to adjust my seat. We'll make this taller. Need more leverage work those legs oh almost wheelied there yeah this bike uh no! oh my god all right i'm gonna put this mirror on one last time and then this mirror and i if it falls off are professionally done let's get it tight our professional relationship is over. Yeah, I feel the front wheel lifting off when I pedal hard. 
All right, now I have leverage. All right, look at that, it fell off again. All right, no more mirror. I just kept pushing it off with my hand. All right, if the seat is higher, it's not bad. You can get a little bit more leg extension. You could use your legs more. Voltage right now under full load, 37 volts. I did fully freshly charge it to make sure it had a maximum charge. And we're flattening out. Let's throttle and pedal as hard as possible. See where the ghost pedaling is. All right. Not experience ghost pedaling with this bike unless you're going down an insanely steep hill and getting most of your power from gravity as I like to joke around downhill speed tests are useless because any bike in theory could go 120 miles an hour down a steep enough hill if you know what I mean it's funny I was reading on the uh, KBO Facebook group and someone asked, hey, how do I get more power from this thing? How do I go faster than 25 or 20 or whatever? Almost unanimously, everyone was like, what's your problem? What are you, crazy? What are you, nuts? What are you, maniac? Get a motorcycle, whatever, whatever. You know how it is. And I'm here sitting next to an e-bike that I made that has pretty much 6,000 watts at peak voltage. Like, all right, I won't participate in this group that much. But that's where I found out the settings for this bike, so that was nice. Downhill speed test here. This is a good opportunity to bend those brakes, baby. Get in nice and hot, nice and toasty. Yeah, these mechanical brakes work great. No complaints. This is a lightweight bike, guys. I almost always like to see hydraulic brakes in e-bikes, but for little bikes like this, it's fine. Mechanical, it just needs a little bit more adjusting than hydraulic disc brakes because with mechanical disc brakes, as they wear down, you have to adjust the calipers. There's a little Allen bolt on the side, which you twist just a tiny bit, and it closes the gaps between the brake pads and the disc. And that's all there is to it. Whereas hydraulic brakes, they self-adjust. Bring this back down since I don't need to be up that high. Yeah, voltage is recovering. 39 volts. We'll keep at it, guys. We'll keep going. We'll get to at least 10 miles and see what the battery is like on this bike. The tires are nice and quiet. They're not too aggressive. Small little knobs in the tires. And of course, they are thinner, so that's less surface area. So these tires are a little bit quieter than your usual fat tires that you experience. Gear shifting feels nice. The seven gears is plenty for this bike. And I do appreciate that the lowest gear is on the lower side because like right now, bike ain't gonna give you all that much power and it's up to you and your legs to leg it on over to your destination. All right, we leveled out, bring the gear back up. Easy peasy. Shifting feels nice and clean, smooth and crisp, as it should be. So far, the seat is comfortable. It is on the wider side, nice and squishy. No complaints there, although it has only been six and a half miles. But initial tests feel fine. I don't know if I'd recommend this bike cruising around on the roads like this maybe around uh, like really slow moving traffic. This is a good bike for uh, actual bike trails, not mountain bike trail, but like, you know, walking paths, rail trails, designated bike trails. No one's gonna look at you and be like, oh, what's that motorcycle that you have there? This is a tiny little foldable bike. Very non-threatening looking, very non-aggressive looking. So no one's gonna say anything. But what we're gonna do now is ride around a bit and take some more uh, B-roll footage of this bike. I'm gonna go ahead and take some pictures of it. We've got some good lighting. We're gonna ride this thing around a bit more, 
Uh, there's people playing uh, catch over here. So I can't take pictures there. Check it out. Turn around. Zroop, nice and easy. Tight turn radius. Easy peasy. We'll go somewhere else to take pictures. Final thoughts on this bike, guys. From this initial ride. The gearing is great. I love the color of the bike. I love it. The paint job is phenomenal. That's pearl white color. For that reason, and for that reason alone, I would always get the white color instead of the uh, black one. Unless for whatever reason you don't like it, then that's fine. That's up to you. <clears throat> the display settings, once you get them calibrated perfectly, everything works great. The speedometer is accurate. Very, very smooth power delivery system. Almost too smooth because when you first get started, it barely gives you any power. But... That'll eliminate any kind of jerky movements from the acceleration, which some people don't like. And right now we're coming up to a hill. And uh, this is the downfall of a weaker bike like this, is that it's not good for hills. If you're looking for something to deal with hills, this is not the bike for you. If you're in a flat area, you'll be fine. Especially if you're not going far. Because again, this is a lower voltage system, smaller battery. I do like that it is very foldable. Nice and compact and lightweight. Some of these folding e-bikes, they're massive. Like you fold it up, it's a heavy bike to begin with. You'll fold it and now it's just a heavy folded object that's even more awkward than before. Because usually when you fold a bike, there's no mechanism that latches it into that folded orientation. So it's kind of floppy and now it's extra floppy and awkward and even heavier. Handles the bumps pretty good. No complaints there. Although this is a hard tail with smaller tires. Doesn't have the usual giant fat tires. Bumps are fine. Tires are aired up to 30 PSI. The seat is fairly comfortable. I think it does have springs in it so that will help. I do really like the battery orientation. How it sits underneath you. And you could easily lift it up. Flip the seat up, no fussing around there. Shifting feels great, gearing is great on the lower side, which is good for a lower powered bike. I love the display, again, it does show you voltage. I really appreciate that quite a bit. Handlebars are on the narrower side to facilitate the compact form factor of this bike. Mechanical disc brakes for a lightweight bike like this are just fine. They work great. They stop me just fine. If you are a heavier guy, I don't know. I wouldn't recommend this bike. I'm 200 pounds and I might say that's the limit for the power of this bike. Plus the brakes. And I have a backpack full of uh, filming stuff in there. A bunch of camera gear, etc. Right now we're on a bumpy part. The front shock is all right. It works. It's not gonna win any awards, but it works, it's there. Gets the job done for the most part. And this is just throttle, guys. I'm just throttling right now. I don't wanna go faster than what I'm going now over the bumps. All right, let me pass that. All right, we're showing three out of five bars under acceleration right now. We've got eight miles on the odometer. See a tight turning radius, very good. Voltage is dipping down to like 35, 36 during acceleration, which is fine. That's it for today, guys. If you like videos like this, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. If I've earned your subscription, like the video if you like it, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Please follow me on Instagram and TikTok if you have those platforms. We're trying to bring those numbers up. I'll leave all the uh, links in the description below and I'll leave the info on the screen. And if you don't like this video, tell me why in the comments. If you don't like me personally, tell me why in the comments. Tell me why you're mad. Why are you upset? What kind of childhood trauma led you to be angry at a person reviewing e-bikes on the internet? Tell me in the comments. And I will respond. I try and get back to all of my comments because I love all you guys. 
I like starting conversations. I am way too active in the comment section, but it is what it is. And I will leave on the screen what the voltage of the battery is after a certain amount of mileage that we got. I'll let you guys know what those miles are, how far we got, what the battery voltage is. So it looks like after our 11 mile trip, we have four out of five bars on the battery and the battery has been resting for multiple hours now in room temperature and the voltage is 37.6. That's it for today, folks. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time.